Well, hello, that's me again. Today is July 15th. It's Monday. Happy Monday, everybody. And, um, well, what can I say? The media circus already in the full swing, so to speak. The Everybody who is anybody uh, begin to comment on what happened on rally in Pennsylvania. But, um, yeah, let me obviously show that this is now the um, image which will stay uh, with the United States for a very long time. And this is the image of the basically uh, political system and the environment, cultural environment in the United States. And yes, I'm not going to talk about Trump and his chances because basically he already won elections unless somebody else tries to uh, 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 kill him. And I don't even like the guy. You know, he is, um, how to say it, I, I, I'm on record, he is a hot air balloon, he is narcissist, and he is a populist. Populist being basically throwing the uh, slogans uh, to, you know, hoi paloi, to us, you know, the low lives, and not following, you know, the promises which are made. So you remember his first administration, he was completely subverted by neocons, he was subverted by all kinds of the forces that she, he basically prepared the uh, catastrophe in Ukraine, which of course the Democrats then follow through with it, and uh, his foreign policy was anything but normal. And yeah, any attempt to do something in inside the United States were, have been met with a com complete sabotage, and the guy couldn't even gather proper cabinet, if you wish. However, for all his faults, this is what is happening is a crime. It's crime not only against Trump or for that matter some kind of the political system. It's a crime against the United States or whatever is left, whatever good is left in the country. And um, before we proceed, let me show you the, this image. This is the uh, combined image of American uh, Democratic National Committee and Democrat-leaning media. Uh, the, the part of it also, do, you know, goes to the what so-called uh, nominal, nominal right. Although, let me tell you, there are no right or left, let alone left, in the United States. What is passing under the type? Uh, uh, um, under the title of left is, of course, liberal fascism and so-called liberal fascism. Of course, it's woke ideology, those crazes who, well, basically unemployed people, unemployable people primarily. But that's them. It's the average American journal. That's how he looks. That's average American, uh, you know, uh, media uh, editor. So that's how they look. All those Washington Post, New York Times, all those, you know, even Wall Street Journal. So these are people who are war mongers and will spew the propaganda, which creates, of course, as you might understand, this whole cultural environment which is schizophrenic and uh, United States is the uh, obviously uh, divided country it is torn nation or rather it's several nations and uh, what we know as a Republican or MAGA crowd it's probably the last bastion actually of which prevents the United States from complete disintegration so but everything what is uh, practically everything what is uh, standing uh, standing on the so-called left. It's not left. Again, read my lips. It's not left. There is no left in the United States. But however, this neoliberal globalist crowd, that's who they are. They are criminals. They are warmongers. They are war criminals. They now created the environment. We'll see, obviously, let professionals discuss all those issues of the Secret Service and the FBI and how they failed, which they did. But at least, and here's what correctly RT and everybody in the world now states that before he was shot at campaign rally, the former U.S. president faced a barrage of threats from the left. Again, there is no left. It's Democratic Party. It's the party of chaos. These are people who want to destroy the country because they don't have any allegiance to the United States. They have allegiance to the ideology. And so as... <clears throat> Mr. Biden, <clears throat> uh, Joe Biden decried uh, the attempt on Trump's life, declaring that there is no place for a kind of violence in America ever since Trump won the 2016, uh, 2016 uh, election. However, he faced a steady stream of threats from members of Biden party and their allies in the media. This is this look at this. 
Let me remind you Mr. Uh, Biden uh, and obviously what he was talking about at that time. You see this? He is a genuine threat to this nation. He is a threat to our freedom. He is a threat to our democracy. He is literally a threat to everything America stands for. Well, if America stands for the Democrats' value, then, I mean, I don't know, this country doesn't have the right to exist because everything what we're looking at will be there basically a hell, you know, a playground of evil ideology, which in the end will always bring you to the concentration camp. And that's what it is. And this is what most of people of the so-called on the left in terms of the, the so-called elite highly illiterate highly uncultured and you know again those people have kept this guy in power for so many years now you know saying that he's all right he's okay the fact that he actually doesn't even know where he is and how to put together you know a couple words and so here we have this example uh and let me put it this way take anybody from the new republic none of them knows what fascism is None of them knows what it brings because none of them, they are uh, classic American boys and girls who never encountered any difficulty in their life. They are just whiteboard, you know, just word stringers, if you wish. And Hunter Thompson's definition of the uh, American media, you remember this, what, what they are. I can certainly put it up here again to uh, explain to you what they are. But we choose Discover image based on a well-known 1932 Hitler campaign posted poster for a precise reason that anyone transported back to 1932 Germany could very, very easily have explained away her Hitler's successes and been persuaded that these critics were going overboard. So uh, basically, uh, as I already stated, here they are. This is what they are. Every single of them. Grab anybody from New York Times, from Washington Post, the New Republic, Huffington Post, and uh, you continue on and on and on and this is who they are and people think that they are waving those you know uh, multicolored flags and talking about freedom and what america stands for they are not fascists they are fascists and they are the guys who created the situation that there was a life on the former president of the united states for merrily talking to people he, he's bs so we know that he will not deliver and but he will be elected and you know what i will go out and I'll vote for him you know so and uh, at this stage um, how to put it politely this is the end of the country as we knew it this is the end of the United States and uh, how to yeah this is the book which you probably know and this has been uh, published in 2021 I was finishing this in 2021. I am in no way any kind of prophet. I am the guy and responding to people who uh, constantly tell me, but what are they, or, you know, what you're suggesting to save the country? How about I say my suggestion to save the country on, in which I have uh, actually vested interest because I live here, it's my home, and you know what, I'm interested for this country not going completely mad and bananas, but this is now pretty much uh, uh, inevitable. But uh, the, how about pointing out the real problems, not this BS from the slogans and, uh, and all those, you know, generalized things. No, no, no. I am pointing now every single book, <clears throat> practically every single post in my blog that actually the situation is really bad. And how to put it politely, this is what I wrote in Disintegration. And this was, I'm, I was quoting myself from 2017, from my first book, the, you know, Losing Military Supremacy. And here it is. If the United States has any future as a stable and relatively well-working republic, it must start a really serious nationwide discussion on the competence or rather lack thereof and indeed the malice of the Washington lobbies and corrupt politicians, many of whom, far from serving people as they claim, should be serving serious prison terms for precisely not serving Americans, but rather their own financial and power interest. With, uh, will such a discussion be sustainable on a nationwide scale in the Orwellian world of the U.S. mass media? 
President Trump run on the drain the swamp agenda. Today it becomes increasingly evident that the so-called swamp will stop at nothing to preserve its power. The more the American general public is educated on that, the higher are the chances for recovery, even if it takes a long time. So, and after that, <clears throat> That was actually seven years ago. Now, this is what I wrote uh, more than three years ago. As it turned out, I was too optimistic, because there will be no recovery. It will be something else altogether, because what will emerge will not be the United States we used to know. <clears throat> if the United States preserves itself as a unified state, a doubtful proposition in itself, once one considers the speed with which a complete and severe systemic dysfunction has afflicted the country, everything we knew about the United States will be gone and the world will face an unstable third world geopolitical entity armed with nuclear weapons, placed in the middle of an internal power struggle which may take an extremely violent form with the ever declining institutions of the American state, unable to mitigate the unfolding catastrophe. As we already know, the American state is, well, you saw yourself. Uh, let, obviously, as I already stated, professional discuss the issues of the Secret Service, FBI, of how the, you know, uh, the directories, you know, and those angles for the shooter, uh, who probably was a lone guy. People speculate that it could have been, uh, you know, uh, some kind of the operation. Could, could he have been? Possible, absolutely, and this is precisely the type of the person uh, whom you will seek out to, well, basically convince them to do the, the deed, and, well, or maybe he was indeed, you know, just trying to do the other, you know, inscribe his name in the history of the United States, I mean, luckily he failed, and, but this is not where it all stops, and as Branislav Malinovsky stated in 1914, uh, war as charity starts at home. He was talking about the psychology of the warmongers, of warring people. And pugnacious nature of the modern present American state is undeniable. And right now it will take some time to bring back United States to some kind of census. And sadly, you cannot do this anymore by normal means because uh, United States has become basically ungovernable entity it's it's becoming the third world. It still has the you know all those signs of the first world nation. But I mean, if you go in deep into the United States, you look at the uh, some cities, especially dominated by the Democrats, uh, you will see yourself a complete disaster. It's catastrophe, economic, political, cultural, what have you. Drugs. I mean, overdosing everywhere. I mean, uh, soon the American cities will look all like pretty much like Kensington Avenue, lovely Seattle. You to be cleanest wonderful city i mean you will not recognize it today so this is the result of uh, those morons urban you know uh, so-called professionals with their <clears throat> very bad education some of them learn only to write code which is important of course nobody argues with that who vote consistently for people who are absolutely downright not jobs and well, guess what? This is what we get for the coastal so-called elites. They think they are elites. They are not. They are highly uncultured. They are stupid. And, of course, they pro uh, are basically have this propensity to spread their ideological views, which are complete nuts. So, but that's not only that. Now, uh, uh, Mrs. Uh, <clears throat> Zaharova, she actually absolutely correctly comes out and says that foreign ministry assassination attempt on Putin was prepared with US money we know this we know this these guys sitting there in Washington they, they would love nothing more than some jerk from Ukraine try and kill Putin they are genocidal maniacs if you take anybody from Trump administration the, the oh, pardon me uh, Biden administration uh, you will see yourself these are not normal people mentally they are damaged because they are you know pampered children from the Ivy League with degrees in nothing with zero professional skills but here they what they want 
the assassination attempt on President Vladimir Putin, which was mentioned by the uh, head of the main intelligence directorate of Ukraine, Kirill Budanov, included by Rosinform uh, uh, monitoring in the list of terrorists and extremists, was prepared with the U.S. money, said Russian Foreign Minister spokeswoman Maria Zakharova. And I mean, I want to stop here immediately in terms of the favorite thing, which going back to uh, New Republic uh, uh, cover with uh, Trump being Hitler, so to speak. None of the Americans know what Hitler is or not know what real war is and what fascism brought to the world. United States have been spared war and in fact profited greatly, which isn't the foundation of the America's hegemony, so to speak, after World War II. I mean, they didn't like Soviets because Soviets who bore the brunt and basically saved the world from Nazism, uh, they were resisting, you know. Well, Russians will always resist. Russians are much older than the United States and in terms of war uh, record, United States doesn't even register there uh, except for the Pacific War. Other than that, it's just second rate. I mean, mediocrity through and through. So, but the uh, point is that this is what is happening. These people love to use Hitler. Remember, Vladimir Putin was also called Hitler by what? Hillary Clinton and Joe Biden, who continues to insult him. And that tells you that there is no class in Washington. They don't know what class is. They don't teach them because basically what you have, you have a bunch of shysters which are going through the so-called uh, media and uh, so-called elite, uh, you know, institutions, which produce not, they don't produce elite. They don't produce statesmen. There is no statesman in the United States right now. Maybe Trump will be able and slow down some uh, debilitating processes, but United States now is the uh, torn nation, and I was warning about it, and people like Dmitry Arlov were warning about it. Dmitry Arlov started writing about the collapse much earlier than me. I just wrote it from the military political point of view. But so when you look at this, that and you already saw yourself that actually the um, military uh, might, so to speak, and quote, of the United States. This bluff, this has been called, this is complete myth. Uh, the, as I already stated, militarily, the United States won't be able to fight itself out of the wet paperback. And the idea that they, the United States and NATO can conduct some kind of the combined arms operations of scale, oh, please, can we stop this garbage anymore? Let's face uh, facts into the face and see what is happening and what was beautiful and uh, indeed a very uh, law-abiding and democratic country turned into it's turning into the third world, banana republic. Politically, it is already there. So, and um, now if we take a look at, uh, you know, uh, what is happening in terms of the uh, situation on the front in the special military operations, you can see yourself a drop in the daily, not daily, it's specific date on July 14th, you have see, you see the drop in the KIAs and uh, wound, uh, wounded in on the Ukrainian side, but then again, they are running, you know, they cannot sustain any kind of intensity. And you, as you can see yourself, we have a pretty good harvest of, in a day, 11 tanks and APCs, 49 armored vehicles, uh, vehicles, 51 artillery and mortars, a uh, bunch of the UAVs have been shot down, including on the, over Russian territory, one MLRS and four SAM uh, uh, air, uh, air defense complexes have been annihilated. So in this case, there is now everybody discusses, my, my gosh, it's, uh, you know, what, uh, they will send F-16? Sure, let them send F-16. Why don't they send actually F-15s and F-35s? That will be fun. And again, as I already stated, the, there is now competition probably between Russian Air Force and Russian Air Defense who shoots first these F-16s. So they are playing words that the only thing they can do is the violence such as, you know, assassinate somebody and, uh, you know, murder defenseless people. But that's about it. This is the capability. And um, essentially the NATO has been de demilitarized despite the fact of their, you know, fluffy rhetoric that, oh yeah, in 2029 we will deliver so so uh, yeah sure I'm sure that Ukraine will exist by not only 2029 2025 so but hey whatever and this continues and <clears throat> just to demonstrate to you how uh, stupid those people are let me demonstrate this is Janet Yellen 
and again, you cannot explain, uh, get Jake Sullivan, uh, get the ch Joint Chief of Staff, you know, anybody, a anybody from anywhere in the top American echelon of military political power, and you will not explain, they will not understand, they don't have reference points, they don't have education, that actually war is the, as I already quote myself, the geopolitical tool of the first order, it influences everything especially so economy so here it is on july 12th three days ago uh mrs yellen suddenly she has the, the dollarization fears will only get worse no it's not the fears which will get worse the dollarization is in progress and it's accelerating dramatically and so they say it's asia times that she is no longer in denial but her tenure could be remembered for the momentum shift against the u.s currency well yeah and they thought that in there in Washington that their greatest power that ever was there to take Obama family, they would know the difference between musket and air defense complex. They know the talking points which are presented to them by their speech writers, but they are morons essentially, and they don't never understood what they were doing to country. So and they essentially pretty much brought it to ruin. And so suddenly Janet Yellen, in the middle of an otherwise mundane congressional hearing on July 9, U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen made an extraordinary admission. The dollarization is now her biggest fear. And let me show you how those people are stupid and have no foresight and why there is no strategic planning in the United States. It doesn't exist as such. And here it is. Uh, so um, in March 2022, for example, Yellen said, I don't think the dollar has any serious competition and it is not likely for a long time. Well, that's what you pay when you have those people from the I degree meals in Ivy League who have no clue what they're dealing with. They don't understand finances either. They, what they know how to make money on the Wall Street, which are bubbles, then there is no money there. It's all those, you know, zeros, which United States has to serve service as the national uh, uh, debt. And what can I say? I mean, it's a very bad news because United States cannot afford this anymore. Uh, come to think about it, and I will be writing about it, it's uh, they cannot afford even the, what they have now, the disintegrating, the complete opposing armed forces and uh, what will be the size which United States is capable of having in terms of the armed forces along Pentagon I think so about one third maybe considering the tradition of the you know procurement policies in the United States when they procure garbage which is very expensive and it doesn't work and of course yeah it's designed primarily to beat the crap out of such countries like Afghanistan and even there they fail you know so and um, uh, war record is like credit history you know and you have to deal with the situation and uh, as I already stated I constantly point out that there are people out there who come out and they spread garbage I mean they believe in this you know whatever confabulated history of the united states and let me show you some russians are following this believe me there are many russians who are very well educated they work not only in the media they work in the think tanks and which many of them not all they try to present a real serious geopolitical analysis and it's based also to a large degree on military history because roots of the united states hegemony or so to speak the wealth are in the World War II. They are, I will tell you more, they are on the battlefields of the Eastern Front. That is why many in the uh, U.S. community, military, uh, political community, they cannot face this fact. They got down there when the war was actually won already. But, and here we have the situation from, and it is a very respectable uh, it's actually not uh, glad, but uh, it's, uh, oh, pardon me, it is glad, but uh, what uh, Dmitry Arekhov writes there, and this is a very interesting position, uh, because uh, this is essentially what I'm writing for uh, many years, why the Anglo-Saxons created a culture of lies. And here he is talking about in early June on the eve of the celebration of the 80th anniversary of the Allied landing in Normandy, and uh, the Redfield and Wilton Strategic Foundation conducted a sociological survey in, of World War II in the UK. It turned out that only 6% of Britons know a 
about the decisive contribution of the USSR to the victory over Nazi Germany. Interestingly, in 2015, when a similar survey was conducted, 13% gave such an answer. That is, in just nine years, the already small number of Britons who know the truth about Second World War has more than halved. And here is what I'm talking about constantly. I wrote four books about, I, I, you know, just go into my blog. The ability to rewrite history and replace facts with the complete nonsense has long been the hallmark of our historical opponents. Here they act accordingly to the old template. An event is reshaped so that all the glory goes to the Anglo-Saxons. Nay, committing bloody atrocities in different parts of the world, the Anglo-Saxons create narratives about the heroism and outrageous menace of those whom they ruin and kill. And this is exactly what is happening. And when you, you know, I'm not, not going to be uh, saying those names, when you talk to people who still believe that the United States won the World War II, I mean, uh, guess what? When your whole building of your views and your conclusions and your education and worldview is built on lies, what do you expect? Well, guess what? What you expect is complete uh, uh, cultural, social, uh, political dysfunction of the country. And we have the uh, former president of the United States being subjected to essentially that was a chance that Mr. Trump survived. I don't like the guy maybe, but he is a former president. He, you know, deserves some decorum. And Mr. S Mr. Um, RFK Jr. stated, uh, the, uh, Mr. Biden didn't want to pro provide him with the Secret Service uh, protection. It's all clear what and how it will, uh, all unfolded. And this is what the United States has become today. And so each time I hear Hitler, fascism, oh, just take go shove it. I mean, you freaking, you know what, petulant children. They are all cowards there, and the only thing they know is how to write and produce a bunch of bile and, you know, an excrement and pretend that this is some kind of journalism and they provide any kind of analysis. None of them are capable of this. They all live in this lie and denial that actually the time is up. And the time was up for a while now. It's just that today, in historical terms, 10 years is nothing. It's the instance, a second. And that's what it is. They destroyed the country. And the country now, it's not going to heal. There's no this BS kumbaya, you know, things of this nature. It's all garbage. Because actually, many people have been scared, and rightly so, because this is what the, uh, Biden's regime is. And just in conclusion, so not to leave you with this, you know, grim situation, which it is actually. So the Russians, you know, they are, and other people, you know, this, um, they are already writing this, that obviously God saved Trump, but not America, which I agree with Pyotr Akopov in Ria News. He posted this yesterday, and uh, this is a very great, actually, uh, what is called AI thing. But uh, obviously, here is this. You know, Mr. Trump, you know, Van Gogh, you know, <laughs> so it's funny. It, there is funny. It has to be made you know, a lot of fun on that. And you cannot imagine the amount of the, uh, you know, uh, memes uh, circulating now. And it's good. You know, people have to take it also with humor. Thank God he survived and wasn't harmed. And yeah, he will be declared the, you know, uh, Republican nominee. And yeah, he's going to win the elections. But Russians already stated, here it is. They write on the shell. For the year of Trump, this is the revenge of Russians to Ukrainians for the uh, uh, part of uh, president's year. So what can I say? You know, you have to have fun because otherwise what is happening around us is obviously it's disturbing. Many people really going insane. They don't know it. But believe me, this cultural milieu, this atmosphere, which is absolutely suffocating in the United States, this uh, whole media, which are criminal, most of them, it's, yeah, it's difficult to tolerate. And some people going nuts slowly, but surely. So, and this is what I wanted to tell you today, guys. And as usual, those who like what I do, please subscribe to my channel. And I'm glad that you already heard the new piece of, it's called Nero, no less. There's a kind of, you know, there's a, a little bit of whiff of the hint on the, what is happening. This is Nero by uh, my wonderful friend Ant Anton Avcherenko. And you will be hearing more pieces of music. And those who can afford, please support me on the Patreon or buy me a coffee and too. And <clears throat> that's it, guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.